plants. Have the first okay. All right. Good afternoon. It's uh, 1 30 p.m. on Monday, March the 7th. And this is the Real Property Committee meeting. We have all the committee members that are present. Katie Myers, Kevin Thompson, Rusty Streetman. We also have Douglas Carr here and some other members of the audience and staff. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order and acknowledge that the press and the public have been duly notified of the meeting in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act. Our first order of business is the approval of the previous minute, meeting's minutes. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion, any changes that need to be made? <clears throat> Sir. All in favor, say aye. 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 Next uh, is citizens' comments. Do we have any citizens' comments, Nicole? No, no citizens' comments. And fourth order of business here is Marina Tenant's comments. And I think uh, I will be recognizing Brian Berrigan uh, to come to the microphone. And Brian, if you could just state your name and what Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Brian Berrigan. I run the Isle of Palms Marina as well as the Marina Market. And uh, appreciate the opportunity to get to speak with you. It's been a, several months, if not over a year, since I've been able to come and visit. Um, there's a lot going on. In addition to um, the construct, the dock construction and the, all the work going on at um, Islander 77, we've also had a lot of stuff going on. And um, I want to start by handing out some very grainy photos that I apologize for in advance. My um, printer just went out on me. Oh, I have it dated up there. Right? And you can tell me about it and make copies for everyone. But, um, this is a picture of the Louise Island fence that uh, we replaced last year. And it also depicts the new marina employee parking lot after we negotiated a deal with the um, marker 116 obviously that eliminated most of our parking so it's going to be less dry storage because that was the former dry, dry storage spot but um we'll be able to park all of our employees in that area um the second picture is uh, Brian, is this also where you had intended to put a sort of an entrance from 41st and sort of a sidewalk there? Yes, sir. And I'd, I'd still like to do that in partnership with the city. Right. Okay. Because all, all of the pedestrian traffic is coming in through the main entrance and it's it's extremely dangerous. <clears throat> okay. So, so yes, that is something that we'd Thank like you. to do down the road. So that second picture is a picture of the shared parking lot, which uh, we recently graded. And... We have been in um, talks with John Bushnell with Marker 116 about that lot and about the management of it and the maintenance of it. And those dialogues are going well. However, we still disagree on the overnight parking and that still needs to be resolved. Um, but we, I can, I can say, proud to say that um, we're working together for the first time and quite a while. Uh, we also donated a gate, access gate to the inner coastal waterway to, well, we're, we're gonna share it. In exchange for them installing it, we donated it to them and that should go up here soon. They've come to realize what a, what a problem we have with what we call bandits and those docks being vacant for so long while they, um, it's just gotten out of hand. And, and they recognize it. And so this gate will help us both tremendously. The next handout. Just some projects that we have going on or have had going on at the store. Um, the first picture is of the stairs that we replaced on the side deck. We painted the entire building this past fall. We are replacing the roof as we speak. It should have been done February 14th, just like everything else, um, supply chain issues. And they tell me they're gonna be done by the end of next week. So that's, that's very nice. And we've done it to make it look like the fuel dock as well as 
some of the um, roofing over at the new um, Islander 77. So there's con conformity throughout the entire site. What else is in there? So the decks, uh, that last picture, when the roofers finish, they'll have the painters will have to come back and, and continue painting the top of the roof, and they're also going to restain the deck. I'm almost done. Take your time. Those pictures are of the playground area. We installed the playground a um, few years ago to obviously allow the local kids to come out and play on them. It's also a bike corral. And we created eight uh, golf cart parking spaces. You'll notice in that first picture, there's a hump in, in front of the entrance. And we installed that to um, slow people down. All the kids going in and out of there and the bicycles. Well, what we didn't know is that it wasn't ADA compliant. And one of our residents informed us of that and requested that we uh, fix it to allow for ADA access to the handicap ramp. And that second picture, you can see, we just did that last week. And just before I was coming here, I got an email from uh, that gentleman thanking me for getting that taken care of. So and we got it as well. Oh, good. Yeah, good. good. So these next ones. These are of the electrical transformers or the, the new panel that is going in or has gone in. We are gonna beautify them. Much like the ones that are at the traffic lights in Mount Pleasant, they're gonna be wrapped. And then that one that you see, um, Mimi Wood, who is one of our employees and also an island resident is hand painting that. that that's the one directly next to the boat ramp. And already it looks so much better. But the, the ones in front of the fuel dock will be wrapped in the next several weeks. All right. That first picture doesn't look good at all in black and white, but what that is is um, some artificial turf on a house on Ocean Boulevard. And um, we've had to delay it because of, of the dock replacement delay, but um, in, in the next couple of weeks, all that area in front of the fuel dock, in front of the store and behind or next to the uh, boat landing will all be artificial turf. And hopefully a lot less dirt getting in the store and on and, people's boats. And that'll be pretty consistent with what the, uh... Islander 71 is doing also. It is. They're there today. They yeah. started that today. So, it, and it's the same company. So it'll be sprint turf. It'll look at uh, pro turf. Pro turf. Yes, sir. Is is there lead times on that? There is, but I ordered it. They are, it's already here. I, I ordered it, it long ago. Gotcha. It, there was six weeks. Okay. They're scheduled, I think, the week of um, St. Patty's Day, like the 14th, that whole week. And it's going to take them two weeks to do it. This is the last one. And that picture shows the new fuel hut, which, um, and the new jet docks that we've installed. Um, that was not part of the city's bill. The jet docks, the fuel dock was a portion of it. Um, but I thank the city for allowing me to cost share in that because if you've seen it, it's the real deal. It, it's nice. The, compliments we're getting on it are, are unbelievable. And um, one picture of the yacht, that's the biggest boat we've ever had at the marina. My 23 years, that is by 30 feet. So unfortunately, we've had some problems with the power out there. Um, but once, once we get everything, all the kinks worked out, this is going to be one of the best marinas, certainly on the East Coast. And um, I think we'll be proud of that fuel hut for, for years to come and commend Kirby and ATM for a good design. There have been some flaws, 
not not necessarily their fault, but um, with any big project project like this, there will be. But we're excited. And um, if you don't have any questions, uh, done so. A couple of uh, couple of points I wanted to make real quickly. The so we still I, I, I know we're going to have an update shortly on the marina dock rehabilitation project but when you mentioned the electrical problems I, I thought those had been corrected but they're they're still ongoing they're getting better but um, um just as of this afternoon they went down again just at 1 15 today uh -huh. so they're fortunately on site and hopefully be restored by the time i get back there right they're but, having um, it's a concern of all of ours kirby's um trans world obviously our tenants and we've got a 130 foot yacht up out there that's power just went out. That's not good. Because we're having issues with the panel. When it, and so is it still the panel? I don't know what happened today. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Uh, yeah. So all this stuff you showed us, who paid for it? Uh, marina joint ventures and the marina marina outpost okay so this this is all funded by by you through your leases yes sir and uh we appreciate you bringing these in i, I, I just want to point out to the public basically that there's a lot of things that get done down down around the marina that obviously the city funds but there's also a lot of things that uh mr berrigan pays for himself so uh uh and i know we've had conversation in the past you know in regards to some of the projects i actually thought the playground and all that was city funded but you know you you actually put that in so all that to say is you know it looks like it looks like a good a job well done on all of this uh i think the marina is going to be a real show place when everything is buttoned up across the property and uh I'll turn it over to Kevin or Katie. Any questions on anything? Just thank you for all those improvements. Um, I think it's great. And uh, your, your fuel dock building looks fabulous. Thank you. <clears throat> what a difference. It really is. We can't, can't wait to get in it. We're waiting <clears throat> on the cabinets right now, but um, it, it, it's going to be something we're going to be proud of for many, many years. Yeah. And thanks. Yeah. Katie, anything? Um, thank you. <clears throat> okay. I do want to mention one more thing. It wasn't on my notes. So, um, we do have two new resident tenants of the marina just in the past week, and um, there has been a misconception that we don't like having island residents as our tenants, and that couldn't be any further from the truth. Uh, as a businessman, I'd much rather have island residents who are going to use their boat more than non-residents. They're going to fuel more. They're going to go into the store more. They're going to come down on their bicycles and their golf carts, which take, takes up less parking. So um, just in the past week, two new resident tenants. Okay. Thank you. And as always, uh, you're welcome to come for the Marina tenant comments each, each month when we have this. And uh, uh, appreciate the update, Brian, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to old business. Uh, first order of business on, under old business is update on the Marina Dock Rehabilitation Project. So. Douglas, I'll turn it over to you. Yep, I would, um, Desiree would typically give this, but since we have the uh, resident expert in the house and mm -hmm. Kirby, we have him here. So I would just, I, I asked him if he would mind doing this part of the agenda. Um, so if you don't mind. Uh, not entirely prepared, so I'm just gonna wing it. Yeah, <clears throat> the, Kirby, uh, Kirby, be sure to tell everybody who you are and who you're with. Too. Sure. Okay. Uh, Good afternoon, Kirby Marshall with ATM, Marina Consultant on the Marina Rehabilitation Project. Uh, been working on the project since I think 2015 and finally see the finish line on this part of it. But um, the construction of the new docks along the Morgan Creek side of the property is nearly complete. The docks have been in place for some time. The anchor piles are all in place. They're, they're all secured and ready to go. The face and restaurant docks have been done for some time and, and punched out. All the remedial punch list item work on those docks has been done. Understand we're having a little bit of an electrical issue here again today, which I will get to the bottom of as soon as I 
get outside here, but um, had another similar electrical issue on that, those docks. What was it a week or two ago, Brian? And what's, what I understand is going on is, is kind of two separate things. The first issue we had over there was the panel, the electrical distribution panel, which feeds those docks is located right behind the bandstand uh, of the uh, restaurant. And for some reason, some way, somehow, I, we, we don't know, the interior of that um, panel had been corroded, got corroded, the power went out sometime. Um, December and we we're waiting on a part to fix it, got it fixed, got it cleaned up, got the corrosion out of there, turned it back on, everything was working fine. About two weeks ago, there was another outage. I guess a, a transient boat had come in, plugged into there, into the pedestal and it tripped everything out. Well, each of those pedestals on those docks is designed to accommodate up to a, I think it's a five milliamp leak uh, of, of power. And in aggregate, if, they, if, if it's over five milliamps on any pedestal, that pedestal and that pedestal alone will cut out. So you don't trip the entire system. However, if you get an aggregate of four here and four there and four everywhere else, the panel up on the hill is designed to cut out at, I think it's a hundred milliamps. So if you have an aggregate leakage throughout the marina and then you get one boat to come in there that has maybe 20, then everything will short out. That's what happened. We got to the bottom of it. I think the boat in question had some you know, duct tape power cords and things like that. Got that figured out, fixed up, got everything reset and it was working fine until today. So we'll figure out what's going on with that today. But that is on uh, the top of our list and certainly at the top of Desiree's mind in terms of making sure that is permanently fixed moving forward before the contractor uh, leaves the site. So other than that, the face and restaurant docks look great. All the punch list items have been taken care of. And there's a big, beautiful mega yacht on the outside of those docks, which is exactly what they were designed to accommodate boats up, up to that size. Not all the time, but it can certainly handle them. So it looks great to have that out there. The, what we call the charter docks, which are the docks right behind the <coughs> marina store. Those are all in, the gangways are in, they look great. Those have been energized with power, but not with potable water or fire suppression yet. Uh, that work is ongoing, should be complete. Let's see, today's the seventh? Seventh. About three weeks, all that work will be done. Work is ongoing at the fuel dock, which includes the little fuel hut area. They're piping the, uh, the fuel dispensing product lines getting ready to install the dispensers and plumb the pedestals out there with potable water and fire suppression. That's really all that remains except for the punch items on the fuel hut itself, which looks amazing. And uh, really I think will be something that'll be a sustainable asset for a long time, really came out nice. So that's, that's really it. I talked to Jack Harrelson, the project manager at Salmon Dredging, who's in charge of the project on Friday afternoon. Uh, he and I, I really pushed him to be done by the end of March and wrapped up and punched out and gone. Um, so that's the target goal. That's the date that we have in mind. And we want to see if we can achieve that. The, uh, the only thing that Jack and I discussed that may affect that is the, the uh, potable water and fire suppression subcontractor that they're working with, just making sure he gets in there and buttons up all of his stuff. Once that work gets done, we have to submit as-built construction documentation to DHEC for an operating permit for the potable water system on those docks. We already have it on the face and restaurant docks, so that's, that's good certified water. Everything on the charter and fuel dock has to be certified by, by DHEC. We have to have the disinfectant done and the bacteriological tests done and things like that. But we are aiming to have all that done by the end of this month. So that's where we are. Will we get as built on everything? Yes. Yes, we will. Okay. That's part of the contract with Sands is to provide dock as built as well as operations maintenance manual items that will be shared with you as well as the operator. Mm -hmm. So everybody can kind of keep up with what uh, needs to be done. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's crucial. Yeah. It knows where everything's going. Yeah. And and we've been communicating with Brian in terms of loading criteria on the docks. What what boat, what docks are designed to accommodate what size boats under what conditions. 
So we've been communicating that type of information throughout as the marina started to come back online and operate. And we'll continue to do that. He's, he, uh, Brian and his staff have been working with, unfortunately, the, um, the uh, electrician as well to try to troubleshoot and learn how to reset some of the pedestals when these little tripping incidents occur. Hopefully that's all it is again <coughs> today, but again, I'll, I'll get to the bottom of that and, and communicate with you all on that, that topic. I know you're going to check on the electrical issue, but you know, we have, of course, the huge yacht down there that just takes up the skyline. It's beautiful, but there's also another, I'd call it a yacht, but right on the other side of it, but it pales in comparison size wise. But do you think without, I mean, you know, I know you don't know for certain at this point until you inquire, but would having those both maybe hooked up at the same time, would that cause an overload? Do you no, think? No, it's designed to handle that and, and more. Oh, yeah. Okay. You really, at the dock, I believe, as I recall, I'm not looking at the plans right now, can handle two of those big boats at the same time on the outside with, with no problem and, and capacity to spare. So I, I seriously don't think that's the issue. And, you know, it's not summertime where people are cranking their air conditioners and mm -hmm. things like that overnight. So, I, I can't see a, a, an overload being an issue here. I think it's probably another just tripping incident, whether it's tripping on, on purpose or, or on accident. Okay. We'll find out. Any other questions? Thanks for the update. Good. Appreciate it. All right. Item B, update on the Marina Restaurant Renovation by Marker 116 LLC. Douglas? Okay. Um, I talked with the general contractor this morning they and we were down there um last or a week a week ago um and they are really cranking along now they were being held um by their electrical panel as well they have got, they got that in last week they have it now uh energized they're able to get the interior of the building uh, acclimated which is going to allow them to put in flooring uh, do their paints, do their finishes. So they're um, moving very rapidly on uh, the finishes on the interior at this point. They are, they started, I think today in the yard. Uh, that was, that was supposed to start weeks ago, but uh, they were delayed in starting. So uh, the pavers going out front, also the, the turf um, should be going in shortly. So the outside is really should be taking shape this week. Um, the equipment is starting to come in, uh, the kitchen equipment. They, they had not had the kitchen floor completed before maybe like the end of last week. So they're now in a position where the equipment can come inside and come into the kitchen, uh, be hooked up. The hood is finished. The um, bathroom, all the bathroom fixtures are going in and close to finished, if not, if not finished. Um, the front entrance, there's a new front entrance that's now in, and um, they, they are pushing to get a certificate of occupancy by the 25th of this month. I think that the contractor believes that he'll start calling for his final inspections next week. Uh, they are hoping to get a CO by the 25th and they are um, targeting to open April 1st. We have our, um, our group meeting on the project tomorrow. It'll be with the owners and um, our insight, our third party inspectors. So we'll have more information um, tomorrow, more detailed information, but all in all, it's, um, it's moving along very well at this point. I was uh, down there yesterday afternoon uh, and uh, ran into uh, the Marker 116 group, uh, Dave, Chrissy, and John, and took a tour, you know, unplanned tour, you know, invited me in and, you know, just walked all over it. And it's, it really is shaping up. It's, I mean, I know there's still a lot to do, but yep. a, a lot that can be closed on here pretty quickly, I think. And uh, I mean, even have some of the lighting fixtures up, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a real show place when they finish. So, and you're right. I was down there this morning too, and they had just started smoothing out the front and getting ready to get everything ready to go for the pavers and put those out there as well. So, 
Any any comments yeah. or questions, Kevin? Hey. No, I got an update from uh, John Bushnell the other day along the same lines as what Douglas just reported. And I've been down there. The place looks great. Getting excited about it get, getting open. John told me yesterday that the, the, the large walk-in cooler was supposed to arrive today. I don't know whether it got there or not. You know, it's, but he seemed to think yesterday afternoon that it would, it would arrive on the property today. Okay. Yeah, I, I have just one more thing. I'm looking at that April 1st start date. Um, I know that the, the parking has, has and continues to be an issue. Um, and I just want to point out that we've got to figure out how to fix that issue before April 1st, because once they open for business, they are going to need a place for people to park to come to their restaurant. And with, um, I, I believe there's about 20 overnight parking people there parking overnight constant not just not just at night but they're parked there at all times um and that's uh 20 people parking in a, an area that people won't be able to go to the restaurant um and so that's just something that we need to we need to figure out how that's going to get fixed sometime between now and april 1st douglas anything to add to that no, nothing to add. You know, we we have been trying to uh, kind of meet and with the groups and get consensus as to what you know what uh, those agreements include, what the responsibilities and what the you know basically what's in those agreements, what can be um, held to by those agreements, and in addition to what's in the in the agreements what's a, just a general good practice for both tenants. I mean, I, I think the staff feels like there should be a common uh, goal of having two successful operations and they, you know, hopefully will be able to find that balance of, you know, sharing and adhering to all of the agreements that are in place. And I would hope that the outcome of that would be, you know, with, discussions going on between uh, the tenants down there that hopefully they can come to a resolution where, where there is, you know, working together commonly, because I think it just be, it would just be better for, for the two of them if they uh, both come to an agreement, work things out, get this restaurant open, see how things sort out once it's open. And I think we're going to have a lot of traffic and let's just see what kind of issues there may be. And, uh, and I know in regards to overnight parking, we have had a lot of discussion about that. It's still an open issue. I'm not clear myself on that, other than I understand it to be free parking after eight at night, first come, first served. And, uh, but uh, that's probably more of a legal question that has to be answered as to how that looks. So unless anybody's got anything else to add, I'll, I'll leave it there. Well, well, Brian mentioned in his report that they, they've been having discussions, which is encouraging, and I'm sure they'll continue those. So, anything else, Katie? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and we'll move on to the old business item C update on the proposed public dock and green space at Dallas Palms Marina. So, um, <clears throat> I will hold a lot of the uh, discussion on the green space for the for later in okay. the um, agenda, since that's you have some proposals in your packets. We've been working on that, um, but we're we're going to go into that in a little bit more detail later in the agenda. So, uh, at this part of the agenda, I'd like to just focus on um, the dock, and the staff has spent considerable time. Um, analyzing, meeting, discussing how that dock operation should be handled. We have gone to one kind of end of the spectrum that we envisioned it operating close to how we see the rec center operating with basically a person staffing uh, that dock, collecting data, uh, looking at usage, how are people using it? Are they fishing? Are they launching their kayaks? Um, giving assistance to residents. So we kind of looked at a, what I would call a full service operation at that dock was one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum was to basically have a, 
a wide open, you know, self-managed or unmanaged situation um, with just some rules of kind of rules of, engage, of engagement down there. And what we're going to hopefully, um, we'd, we'd like to recommend that council consider and, and look into is, I would say kind of in the middle of those two options, whereby we would have the police department unlock and lock uh, the facility, unlock it at sunrise, um, lock it at sunset. They would come down periodically, just kind of do a, a site check, be sure that nothing's, you know, out of place or, or not as it should be. Um, and then we would like to post a sign. You have a, a, a distributive copy of that sign. It's primarily things that we want uh, people to do, enjoy. We want it to be a welcoming sign and not, um, you know, not just a list of things that you can't do, but at the same time, there are things that we don't want to happen down there. So uh, we would like to get feedback. We'd like to get that sign ordered. Um, if you all are comfortable with it, we'd like just kind of a, a head nod. If you want to spend more time on it, let us know and we can delay ordering that. But right now there, there's really not any sign down there that, that tells the public how it operates. So that's one piece of business we'd like to talk about. Um, any thoughts on any thoughts on that? Can you oh, wait, do we have the, the the area to launch a kayaker right now? We, we do not yet. Um, okay. Brian has offered he he has um, some jet dock material that would be good for launching off of the back of that dock. He's offered um, for the year to to let us have that and to install it. Sounds like um, it needs to be maybe some minor repairs, some modifications made to it. So um, he's indicated that in about three weeks, he could have uh, that launch installed down there. Okay. Uh, still... Ryan, anything? Is that, did I say that accurately? You did. Okay. Right on, right on point. Okay. Hopefully it's sooner than three weeks. So thank you, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Okay. So are we permitted to allow that? Yes. No. <laughs> well, no, I take that back. Jet Correct. Yeah, you are permitted to jet Okay. Got me nervous, Kirby. Sorry. Okay, just uh, you were at the bike, so just to let the public know, we are permitted for a jet dock there currently. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and Brian Berrigan is offered to install one for use before we get everything completely renovated in some way. That's correct. Okay. And that's a code compliant safe way to i mean that's that's how you're supposed to launch a, a kayak or did he not nod i was looking at you to... uh, he's making a face <laughs> there, there not to no, put you on the spot there's no specific code in here. okay but i don't think there's an ada code that governs kayak launches either so i don't i don't think there's I just want to make sure we're not going to be putting something out there that somebody's going to hurt themselves, you know, do whatever, slip. I mean, I don't know. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I've never used one of those before for launching a kayak or a canoe, so I don't know. Um, we will work with ATM and Brian to to be sure it's safe, and um, we don't want to, we don't want anything unsafe out there. So we'll ensure that it's done properly. Perfect. What, what do you think about the verbiage that's on the proposed sign here? My one question would be where it says you can fish. I thought that was a non-harvesting area because of the outfall at 41st. I don't think you should get oysters there, but I think you can. I think Brian has thought that it maybe wasn't the best idea to fish. And I think we've had concern over kind of the cleanliness of people fishing, but I don't think there's anything wrong Boats with going fishing. by. Is there anything, there's not a legal problem with fishing. There. I know kids fish over there all the time. I don't, they're off the other docks, but. 
I, I saw a guy down there fishing yesterday afternoon when I was down there. <laughs> he was sitting down there. Didn't seem to catch anything, but he was fishing. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I, I don't think we envision it to be a, you know, we kind of yeah. envision a dad taking his son and putting a line in just for fun. I, yeah. I don't think it'll be a, a major fishing operation. I think Brian has had concerns about the filament, you know, the lines being caught on things and fish guts and yeah. you know, stuff like that. How much time would it take to get these signs if you order them? Amy is our sign expert. Oh, okay. Um, two weeks. Okay. I mean, if you all feel good about what we've got here, we could give the go ahead on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got, we got to start somewhere and yeah, I think the sign's fine, but I would kind of like to lean on having, <clears throat> trying to have a person down there too, just watching things and liability. So, well, I think I, I think I saw a head nod on the sign. So I think we'll get, we'll get the signs ordered on this kind of striking. So back to the operations of how we've envisioned it operating. What we have, and we've, we've put it uh, into the, um, budget for this year, and we'll talk about that under this uh, budget section. But we entered into a dialogue with Coastal Expeditions. They are there, um, you know, throughout the busy season. They have staffing. They they obviously are very uh, good at what they do and very capable around the water. So they were kind of a natural um, fit. We we thought to do some type of management down there. Uh, and we had a dialogue with them about that. And we actually received a proposal of, of really somebody, like I said, kind of like the rec department uh, operates, a kind of a, a desk there, a person to help people launch, take, uh, gather data, see how people are using it, you know, really try to, passively enforce the rules if things were not happening as they should be just kind of an an eye eyes on the operation um we we saw that and you know we having just kind of gotten through a hard um divorce down there with a commercial operation i guess we felt a little funny about the optics of having a different commercial operation having a presence uh, on the dock. So I think that we just shied away from that option. But part of what they uh, offered and we discussed was them doing a community, for lack of a better word, kind of a, a community tour, a series of twice a month, they would take groups of residents out uh, to do eco tours, you know, watching there, there would be a different theme of each tour and they kind of do this already um so up to 15 residents twice a month uh we put into the budget for uh five months of that you know while it was the busy season we thought that would be something that would engage the public down there get the residents excited about the uh, facility and kind of engage with the facility so that the cost of that is seventy seventy two hundred dollars that's in, like I said, that's in the budget. We'll talk about that at that part of the um, that part of the meeting. But that to us kind of was a, a middle ground of having some operations down there, but the rest of it really just being handled by the staff. Donnie's staff would handle the garbage collection. Police would handle opening and closing, kind of putting their eyes on it periodically. Um, so it would be pretty well unmanaged most of the time, but we would have some presence down there. So that's what we felt like was a, was a middle of the road approach, but we certainly, like I said, we've kind of been all over the board with what the right direction is down there. I, I would think that I, it sounds to me like that's a very nice, a, a good compromise middle of the road. I mean, I just got out of a rec meeting where we can't open the rec department on Sunday because of staffing. And you know, I would hate to have a situation where we decide that we have to have somebody watching the and I mean I've been to countless docks in my time that don't have, you know, a, a lifeguard basically. And I mean I, I don't think I would hate to have a situation where we can't have it open because we can't find someone to work, you know. And the hours, I mean, you're talking 
you know, sun up to sundown, that's a lot of hours to have somebody, um, you know, sitting there watching it. So I, I feel like with the police department, I mean, you know, they, they monitor that area anyway, you know, um, and there's, and there's certainly people around. It's not like you're out in the middle of nowhere. So. I'm sure it's on your list, but have all the safety equipment down there and available to fire extinguishers, first aid kits. <clears throat> Some, something to throw in the water if somebody does jump in the swim and can't swim. Yeah, that's a good, good point. I know that the plan is to have that ultimately down there, but we, we will need to make sure it's down there now. And, and I, I'm sorry, and I don't know how you handle it, but then, um, you know, like when you're opening a pool, you have to have a phone there for 911 in case of emergency. So I don't know how we handle that. And hard lines, a old thought anymore. Um, but somehow, somebody's got to be able to call 911 quickly. I, I, I don't know. I guess there's a bunch of people down there with cell phones. So maybe overthinking it. Well, it could be, but if we, you know, we need to ask these kind of questions now for sure. But I, I wonder if, I, I wonder if there's a role in this for uh, the fire department, even in terms of some of the safety issues. We got Station Two down there close by. Yes, I mean, I don't know if maybe that's something that could be brought up to uh, Interim Chief Briscoe while he's still here, and just see if there's some ideas there, some things that we could do to promote. The safety issues that we just talked about. Absolutely, we, yeah, we can have a conversation with him. And I know Travis is on the other docks, and um, we have we have been in dialogue with him about the the gate. We want we want to transition the gate to a self closing, self latching one. But we need if it's going to self close, there needs to be a way to get out of there. So, you know, if somebody if it closes and somebody's still down there, we want them to be able to get out. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've had that been having those conversations, but we could certainly uh, get their eyes on farther down as well. That was another thing I brought up to Desiree a little while ago, that that gate, um, you can climb right over that, the way it's not only vertical uh, aluminum, but you also have horizontal. So somebody could absolutely climb over that, whether that's a concern or not. But you see a lot of them with just solid wood that nobody can get over. Um, actually, I took a picture of Jimmy Carroll's old dock down there by the boat ramp and sent it to Desiree. I, I, I think that's something we should look into as well. So I, I did fail to mention that there, there will be a security camera on the, on the dock that will be monitored um, with all the other cameras in the city. So, you know, I, I think we'll know if somebody, if there's something going on down there, we should be aware. We should be made aware of that by the cameras. Good. Good. Uh, any other questions i got i've got one thing to bring up and we're not the public safety committee but uh we did get a note that uh over, over the weekend there were people that were down there and we had a busy weekend down there in, 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 in the uh residential parking area you know where we had the free yep. spaces for if you've got a proper decal for isle of palms or wild dunes and uh, uh at least one uh person brought up that there was really no place to park and that a number of the vehicles that were parked in the residential area were, did not have decals. So that, that ought to be something I think that should be passed yeah. on to Chief Cornette and see if we can uh, maybe make a sweep or two through there occasionally. Yeah, they, they should be doing that. Uh, they've indicated that they would be doing it. I'm not positive, you know, how mm -hmm. frequently, um, but we'll definitely make sure they're right. aware that well, I, yeah, I know we're not staffed up fully with BS <laughs> beach service officers at this point. So I know that's, yeah. that's an issue, but, uh, if we've got maybe someone that on maybe Saturday and Sunday could swing through there more often and just take a look at it, that might be helpful. Okay. okay. We'll pass that along. All right. Thank How you. About, yeah. Before, well, or we can get to it in the budget, but does the, does that sound about right? Five months? twice a month, so basically 10 events, 10 kind of community events through Coastal Expeditions, a cost of $7,200. Any uh, feelings on whether that's good? I, you yeah. like it, you don't like it? No, 
I think it's a nice idea. Okay. And we'll just see how it shakes out. Maybe yeah. we maybe we need less, maybe we need more. Yeah, we talked, you know, they thought that it could probably be popular longer than five months. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we we picked that as a starting point and see gauge the interest, gauge, you know success and go from there mm -hmm. okay i'm so good guess, with it too i guess so they'll it'll be like what like a half day or a, a couple I, hours or I, yeah i think it's that? a few hours in the afternoon okay. i think it would be 15 people you know and it's going to be kind of a sign up first 15 signed up get to go um and it would be yeah just and it would be themed like i said you know there's some that are geared towards um daddy daughter kayak some are geared towards uh Dolphin, you know, places to find dolphin. So there'd be kind of a different theme to each one. Well, it sounds like we're all good with the seventy-two hundred dollars okay. in the budget. Uh, and I'm guessing we would advertise this through yes. social media, right. alapalms.net, City of Alapalms, Facebook, all those different right venues we have. We would. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's see. Item D under old business update on ADA beach access improvements. Douglas? Uh, we are still waiting on OCRM on a permit. We filed a permit to extend the Moby mat um, matting farther on four of our beach, our primary beach accesses. We're still waiting uh, for a response on the permit. Uh, it has just gotten through the public comment um, period. We're through that now. So I was hoping that we would know something uh, fairly soon. I did reach out to OCRM this morning. They indicated that they still needed a couple of more weeks. So we're still in a, in a holding pattern on the permit. Um, we did, since your last meeting, we did meet with the Charleston County Greenbelt uh, group on a request for funding assistance at 34A, Path 34A. That's one that we have a design um, ready to go. And uh, we're wanting to have offset the expense of that one with um, Greenbelt funding. So that one, they, they all appeared to be very favorable. Um, I got you know, a good feeling that we were gonna be successful in that request. Um, and that's, that's about all I have on, on that one, unless there are questions. Um, back to the public um, period. Uh, yes. ending did we have any negative or opposing views we, we were supposed to have some support uh and i'm not positive i it was indicated to me that there would be supportive uh comments sent in but i'm not positive that those did get sent in it was inquired of me how to submit supportive yeah. comments <clears throat> do you know i don't know no. <laughs> I mean, do they, do they make those available to us? That's yeah, it. they, yes, I, they will. Yeah. I haven't asked the question, Yeah, but I can. Well, yeah, if you just ask the question, I, let's see. I would know if I got, if we got negative comments, I, I would have known by now. Yeah, those right. are the ones we watch out for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that, how often are those um, mats maintained? Or so that is another, we, we have the, we have what we're calling a pilot program at 42nd and and it should be weekly that they're going down there. It's weekly that they clean them, they get the sand off. And, and I think it's monthly that they actually roll it all the way out, regrade it. The problem with okay. them is the humping, Right. you know, over time they get deformed and, and humped. And um, so that one we're doing very frequently. Um, Robert is overseeing that to see if, you know, along with our landscaper to see if that's, the correct frequency if we can dial it back or dial it up so we're we're doing uh a six month kind of trial period on that one knowing that we will have to replicate that for each of these because they are i mean that's the problem with them they're very high maintenance uh right. when they get out in that soft sand and i was i was out there this weekend on 42nd and it's it's like there's like a cliff at the end of it <laughs> and the, the bolts that hold it down some of them were like you know, Stick it around. wasn't a smooth transition, and so I was just wondering, because that you know that seems like here we're we're doing this for easier access to the beach, and if you get to the very end of it and somebody's 
Yeah, and, and just so you know, that, <laughs> that one is ending in the point at the point that we think will be lower maintenance. So, you know, when it really gets out in the really soft sand, it's, it, they're going to be hard to maintain. So we're just, if we're successful, we're, we're going to try our best, see how it goes, and it, and it may be untenable. We may yeah. not be able to. I mean, the whole maybe, rest of it looks great. I mean, it's yeah, like perfectly right nice and smooth and, it's, you know, but then you get to the very end. So I don't, maybe there's just something different that can be done at the very end. So we'll, uh, I will check on that through our agreement with our landscape. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. And I see item E under old business discussion of evaluating alternatives for redevelopment of the municipal parking lots. Um, this had been brought up at council meeting and, and uh, uh, had some discussion and decided to send it back to real property to kind of flesh out some ideas on that. So Douglas, do you have some ideas? Yeah, you want to well, I would just, um, and Desiree and I've talked about this uh, at length that whenever something comes available for uh, a commercial opportunity in the commercial district, I am inundated with inquiries about, you know, what can be done there? Can I, can I use it for uh, a head and a bed? Can I use it for a hotel? You know, there, there's this list of things that are very attractive to people wanting to, um, <clears throat> do invest in that district. Generally, our code doesn't allow it. You know, there, there's no there's no new hotels allowed. There's no multifamily uh, development allowed. You you can really do a retail um, operation or an office operation or restaurant. And so we get all of this interest. We tell them what they can do, and it kind of lingers and not, you know, nothing happens terribly quickly. <clears throat> so when this idea of, you know, trying to get, trying to gauge the interest um, of people out there came up, in my mind, I immediately, where your, where your mind goes, if you've been on the other end of the desk, is what the willingness of the council would be to have some flexibility down there. Uh, traditionally, there has not been a lot of willingness to, to deviate from that. Basically the, the position's kind of been a restaurant, a, a store or an office is kind of acceptable, uh, is acceptable, but that's really where the list ends. Uh, and, I, and I think that's for, you know, that's for good reason. I think it's seen as a, as a overpopulated place when it's busy, that there's already traffic congestion problems. There's, um, there's probably not enough real estate to squeeze it all in as it is currently. But from my perspective, if that is the mindset of council, I think, and like I said, understandably so, that there's, it's busy down there, you may not want to, to open up to much else. Um, I don't know that there's gonna be anybody or an interest in putting a lot of money into, um, because really it's going to require a parking garage. At the end of the day, if you are building something down there, uh, you're going to have to account for the parking that's already there plus the parking that you're adding. So it's going to require a garage. And I don't think that the development uh, of, a, of a small office is going to justify that offsetting expense. If there was a willingness to, you know, be flexible, put more, put more, bedrooms out there, put other things out there, then I think there would be a lot of interest. But that's a real, uh, it's a very different request, depending on which way the kind of will of council in terms of flexibility. It's also a lot of staff work. I mean, if there's, if there's kind of, if we knew from the onset that there was not any flexibility, you know, I think we kind of know what, what will happen. If you all told us there was flexibility, it would be a very different request and it would probably generate a lot more interest. But then if it's dead on arrival, because traditionally the council has not been interested in putting more stuff down there, I think we'd be kind of chasing our tail. So from my perspective, it would be key to know how the council envisions that uh, 
your level of comfort with other things going in down there before we kind of go down this path. Which would include a zoning change, correct? Yes. The, right now, the zoning really doesn't allow anything other than a retail space, an office, mm -hmm. uh, or well, a restaurant. When we, when we, yeah, go ahead. Well, when we brought the question up, um, the council and had some brief discussion about it, there seemed to be a fair number of heads nodding, not shaking with the council. I mean, maybe I read that wrong, but it seemed that there was an openness to looking at doing something that might, uh, uh, that we would get requests for information from different entities, you know, planners, developers, that sort of thing, assuming that we'd have to, you know, follow up on the potential zoning changes, but uh, kind of like a what if scenario. We want 460 parking spaces. We don't want to lose parking. How do we go about doing that? And maybe there's ideas there that we could pick and choose from. There could be a possibility of like the cost of a garage or something like that, having sort of a public private partnership, you know, where you're, if you don't share a cost, you maybe have a private enti entity that's willing to go in there, do a parking garage. And uh, you, you can have some parking garages you know, a lot of them are ugly, but they can fix them up now, but they really look pretty attractive too. And uh, so I, I don't know where the rest of the committee feels, feels at this point about this, but our personal opinion is that we look at, uh, you know, coming up with some ideas and just going back to council and just throw, throw those out there and say, you know, this is what we're thinking we may do as next steps. What's the appetite of the council to go along with this and let us move forward with those steps? It almost seems like we need to, we would need to vote on the zoning before first. I feel like in some ways we're getting the cart before the horse. I mean, if we, and like you're saying, we'd be wasting time really. I mean, if, if what you're saying is that really the only thing that's going to be, people are going to be interested in is going to be some sort of, residential like hot you know hotel condo something like that um then we have to change the zoning and i mean and that's i don't i don't know i think that's kind <laughs> of the and, and i don't know that this you know that you need to go through the formal um process i don't think you need to change the zoning at this instant at this point but i think it would be good to know um because quite frankly, the, you know, the, the idea of a boat boutique hotel came up on uh, J.C. Long and it was just dead on arrival. I mean, with, I think there was just no interest because of the level of activity. It felt like it would add to an already busy district. And, and I get that. Um, but if that is kind of the position, I don't know, I guess I'm wondering how fruitful the exercise is going to be but we can certainly we can certainly you know there's there's a lot of people uh bright minds in the community already that that are in this world and um you know we can just kind of get some feedback on if there would be an interest without that but um be <clears throat> hesitant to spend a lot of time if there's no interest in having flexibility around it. it it just seems to me we're kind of stuck because you're looking for something from us to move forward and the council's looking something from you <laughs> yeah saying this ideas. is what it would look like so we're back to that horse and cart right. situation yeah. so I'm not sure how we figure that one out mr chairman um maybe the best thing to do is to go back i mean to, to get it back on the council agenda and just just lay it out there. I mean, this is if before we go to the next step, we need to need, need to see what the willingness would be to pursue a zoning change. Yeah, and I, and I feel like it's also it's got to be the type. Maybe it could be something along the lines of, okay, would would we be willing to allow X number of rooms, or, you know, mm -hmm. X occupancy versus, you know, not some huge hotel but something small or it, you know or is it just 
not even something that we would want to do at all. And mm -hmm. You've got, yeah, that's possible too, but you, you could also look, I mean, I jotted some notes down, but you know, we, you know, parking, six, 460 spaces, we need to have that. That would be parking that would be, would be charging for. Again, if that's so, if that's, you know, in partnership with a private entity, that's one thing we could look at that. Um, there are, you know, we, you know we're, we talked about maybe having public restrooms down there. Um, and there's also areas that you can go and apply for different grants too. Like Municipal Association of South Carolina has an economic development grant to help offset an additional cost. Those kind of things can be, they can be applied for also. And I think, I think some areas like, you know, like Greenville, South Carolina, where they've done the beautification of their downtown area, my hometown is totally different now than it looked when I was growing up there in a good way. I mean, there's a lot of different things that we may be able to do, you know, to explore to see if we can get some some funding help on any of this. So, and, and maybe this is my misunderstanding, but I was thinking that the, um, the kind of task or the, the project would be a partnership with a developer to build something. If, and that's kind of the, the scenario that I've been working under and, and kind of bringing the concerns to you all about if it was simply a municipal use, you know, that we got, it's whatever the city council and the community wanted, it'd mm -hmm. be a very different, if we didn't, if, if there wasn't a developer involved um, to kind of push something that in the, in the end gave them a return on their investment, you know, that would be a, still a third project. If it was just a municipal use of things like restroom, uh, some kind of recreation facility uh, that would that would be still another project, but I don't know that there would be an interest or a willingness from a private partnership on that project. Well, I think that's where we were looking for, you know, the search for information, you know, requests for information from potential developers in the private sector to say, under this scenario, if we, we have this lot here or lots, we need 460 parking spaces. You know, and then can you give us some ideas of what we could do there to retain those 460 parking spaces and also make this an area that not only could be beautified, but, uh, you know, could be developed and what maybe some of those ideas were. Generate list of ideas and also let them know, too. I mean, you know, we don't want to just have their ideas and them thinking, thinking that we do not have a commitment down the road to maybe partner up with one of them. Uh, but, you know, g going at it from that standpoint to see what kind of interest we might get in terms of ideas, and then we could look at those ideas and say, I like this, I don't like that, I like this, I like this, I don't like that, you know, start from that standpoint, just to see if there's, you know, some good ideas that come out of it, and then move it from there. And I, I think what he, what he's saying is that unless we're going to allow, unless we're going to allow for occupancy, that nobody wants it. That, that is kind of what I'm hearing. Is that? I think that's, yeah, I think that's very <laughs> or, or unless mm -hmm. we're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's a different, I guess I hadn't really thought that it, this could just be a city beautification project, which certainly happens. And, um, but yeah, it would be a different, it wouldn't be, I don't think it would be much of a partnership. It would be the city developing it sounds like we're we're, we're we're looking at we're either gonna change the zoning to allow occupancy or we're gonna do beautification and mm. and maybe just you know i mean the it's funny because when i was looking at the packet and the the drawings that i saw for the um the dock space when i first looked at it i was thinking that that was actually like a, a drawing for what could be done to the parking lot so may, i mean maybe it's something not that that's it would still be a pretty big undertaking but maybe it is just more of a beautification of what's already there um i wonder if this would be something appropriate for the planning commission to look into they could you know i 
I do think that there are, and we could go, we could do it as an RFI. We could also just, you know, Wild Dunes is in the, is in the business of developing mm -hmm. land. They, yeah. Their downtown operation, they added uh, a waterfront component of the park. So, you know, they're kind of, we, we, I think we know what style development they would embrace, but, you know, we have, we do have, um, do have creative minds that just in the community. So we could certainly kind of spitball some ideas and um, generate at, at least enough to generate a conversation about the willingness of the city council. I guess the concern is, you know, historically it's been kind of dead on arrival that there's just already too much down there and to add anything more would be, um, would be counterproductive to, traffic flow and everything else. So that, that I guess is the point of concern that mm -hmm. that historically has not been the direction mm -hmm. of prior councils. Maybe we just go back to trying to unify the area, get, get grants. Let's Douglas, can, can you, can you bring this up to the planning commission? Yeah. Can you throw the idea sure. out? Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. If you don't mind. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, in the meanwhile, should we, I mean, that, well, if we take, if we turn it over to the planning commission to look into some of the ideas here, maybe they could get back with us as quickly as possible. And then we could follow up at that point. Yeah. I mean, they might give, might be able to get enough to kind of bring the question to a head to let you all make a decision, mm -hmm. you know, that, whether it's it's something you could stomach or not. Okay. Yeah. Do we need to vote on that or no. you just take it on no, your I'll own? I'll take it. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on to uh, new business. We have uh, under 6A presentation discussion of condition, condition assessment report of the uh, AIWW and uh, uh, public dock. So the intercoastal dock and the public doc. So we're going to be turning that over to Kirby. Thank you, Kirby. Good afternoon again. Let's see if I can get this. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Okay. Uh, we were tasked by the city to look at the condition of the intracoastal dock and the former water sports dock, now called the public dock, to determine the viability of those that existing infrastructure for repurpose and reuse uh, for continued operations uh, on the waterway. Uh, the existing AIWW dock serves two purposes now, as y'all know. Uh, half of it, essentially half of it, is utilized for restaurant day dockage and, and the other half um, is utilized as traditional marina dockage space. Uh, the water sports dock, as everybody is well aware here, I'm sure uh, was historically used by Tidal Wave Water Sports as a, a commercial water sports dock operation there, jet ski rentals and tours and parasailing and things like that. The lease agreement came to an end with them at some point not too long ago. And the city is now looking to repurpose that dock as a, an area of public access to the waterfront. Uh, the regulatory status of both of these docks is as follows. The intracoastal dock was permitted as part of the overall marina rehabilitation project to have the finger piers and mooring piles removed. Finger piers, mooring piles, all of these be removed and the dock relocated out waterward towards the intracoastal, about 15 or 20 feet this way. That was intended to serve a few purposes. Right now, the dock is challenging for boaters to use, short finger piers, 
not real easy to tie up to the mooring piles. Not mooring piles are not very popular uh, in the Charleston area. People are more used to full length finger piers, things like that. So it's it's really not a user friendly dock. Uh, as such, occupancy has been limited at the dock through the years, and it's <coughs> it's just been really challenging to use. In addition. Most of the sedimentation that we've seen occurring in the marina all the way around the, the corner has been behind this dock and behind the water sports dock, so along and here. So it gets shallower faster in this area along the waterway uh, faster than it does along Morgan Creek. So by shifting the dock out and taking the fingers off, it would make it more user-friendly for people to side tie up to, kind of like the new face and restaurant docks we have out at the marina now, or the docks along Shim Creek and, and things like that. Uh, and it also would provide more water on the inside between the dock and the shore for, for boats to, to access. In addition, the regulatory permits for this entire dock allow for the installation of jet docks behind the relocated dock. Obviously, on the marina side of things, that makes sense. Ryan knows that jet docks are very popular. You can rent them out for a, for a premium price. That's great. Not knowing what may be the future with the restaurant when the restaurant referendum was out and there was no real operator at that point in time, we decided just to add jet docks in to the other side as well, just as a placeholder. Doesn't mean you have to build them, but you're allowed to put jet docks down there too. I, I know that the terms of the agreement with the restaurant tour might have something to say about that, but we just had that in as a placeholder before the restaurant lease came to pass. So that's the regulatory status of that dock. It shifts out, fingers go away, jet docks may be placed on the inside and a new ADA uh, accessible gangway uh, is permitted for accessing this dock. It would come off the existing fixed pier and, and access out here. All these plans for, for that dock were set into place in 2015 or 16. So six or seven years ago, Doc had a little bit more tread left on its tires then, still has some left and we'll talk about that in a minute. The regulatory status for the water sports Doc is totally different. While the intracoastal Doc was lumped into a permit for all the rest of the marina, the water sports Doc was kind of a standalone entity when Tidal Wave was operating. We knew we had, the city knew it had to make some improvements there, but the improvements to that dock are currently permitted to facilitate commercial water sports operations at that dock. It's not a, a public, not permitted as a public use dock. Not a problem to get a change in use permit to allow. It's just, that's what the dock's use was when we undertook the permitting process. That's what it's permitted for. And what's permitted out there is a new ADA access gangway coming out here, like the big gangways at the marina. New ADA access out here and then jet docks going around here. Now those jet docks are permitted, but they're permitted for jet skis. I don't know that OCRM makes a difference or designation between that and kayak launch. I think we're getting into the minutia there, but jet docks are permitted throughout here. Traditionally, what OCRM and the Corps wanted to uh, see and uh, approve with regard to jet docks is the shading of the water bottom. So if you put jet docks in, it could shade the water bottom, it could prohibit seagrasses from growing, things like that. They wanted to regulate that, permit that. I don't think they make a distinction between a kayak launch and a jet ski launch. I don't, I don't believe that's in the regulations, but I just wanted to make that point. So that's what's permitted for those two docks. Now, Mike and I went out there and took a look at both those docks to see, okay, now we're talking about turning this into public access. How does this infrastructure look and how can it facilitate that? And then similarly, it's been six or seven years since we really looked at this dock. What kind of shape is it in? We kind of know salmon's dredging as part of the marina work did a little rehabilitation work on the restaurant end of the intracoastal dock a few months ago because that's in the city's lease with the restaurant tours. The city 
has to maintain that. So Salmon's went in there and they, they fixed some bumpers, they fixed some timbers and things like that. They made it serviceable in its current, in its current configuration. So we, we kind of know what's going on there. But down here, we, we really hadn't looked at it too hard. And certainly the fixed pier, we hadn't looked at it in a number of years. So we, Mike and I went out there to, uh, to take a look. And what we found was that the fixed pier, very robust, robustly designed structure. It was professionally engineered in about 2004 or five by a firm uh, out of Hillhead or Buford. Still around, but really large sized piles, good timbers, really properly engineered. However, it's 18 years old. And the hardware that holds it back together, the nuts and bolts and everything like that, very corroded. Some of them are gone. So sustainability is a concern there. The timbers themselves look pretty good. Uh, some mild concern there, but the hardware needs some attention. The decking on the dock looks like aged Southern Yellow Pine deck. It's, it's cracked, it's, 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 it's warm. Uh, the gangway out there is in serviceable condition. It's not ADA compliant, but back then it wasn't required to be. So it's, it's workable, but it's not, it's not great. The floating dock itself looks and feels very stable. Good flotation, good freeboard, the height of the deck above the water. Uh, it, it, feels really, it feels really stable. It's just not real user friendly. The decking is shot. Um, it's, I shouldn't say shot. It's aged, similar to the, uh, the fixed pier. And the utilities on the, on the dock are, are not functional. The utilities on the um, restaurant side of the dock, the pedestals are all broken, tipped over, cracked, just destroyed. We've advised Desiree previously to just have those decommissioned and taken away. Uh, the restaurant side, they're, they're, or the uh, marina side, they're older, they're aged, they're still there, but we understand they're not functional. The, the electrical, I think there's something to do with the whole construction that went on site. Something is not working. We traced the, the cable back to a conduit that went into the marina, into the restaurant, but we couldn't figure out where it went from there. I don't know if it was fed from the restaurant or the transformer that got removed from out in front of the restaurant, but as I understand it, Ryan, there's not power on your end of the docks. And when I say power, I'm not talking about big shore power like that yacht to plug into. It's just a 20 amp receptacle like here on the, on the wall for people to charge their batteries or things like that, or, or to light, light, the, light the dock up. There's five pedestals on this end of the dock, and there's three down here. These three are broken. These five are here, but they're not there. So the, the piling out here all look good. They're concrete square piles. They look to be in good shape. Um, but it's just, again, not a very functional dock. So that's, that's kind of where we are on, on that dock. I, I want to continue on with the, the condition assessment of the public dock and what we found. The public dock is a very narrow walk. This is a very narrow walkway too, except for the two nodes. The public dock has a very narrow walkway heading all the way out. It's only about <coughs> five feet wide. That's, a, that's inside, inside, inside. But it's, it's, it's really just not a very welcoming dock. It's very constrained. Out here on the end, I think it's, it's 12, 14 feet wide underneath the shade structure. It's nice. And, and the city's recent rehabilitation of that added some benches for people to sit and relax and enjoy the day and catch that breeze off the waterway, which is great. Um, so it's, it's nice. More residential style construction of this dock. Smaller piles, smaller members, two by 12s uh, framing instead of three by 12s on this dock. So it's a very, very uh, light duty dock. Uh, there was a rehabilitation project on the T head out there. Douglas probably remembers, and I don't. I want to say 2010 ish yeah. that uh, addressed some pile issues. There were some larger piles installed out here to supplement the framing and to beef up this dock. 
all of the hardware on this dock is in excellent condition. It's all stainless steel. It looks good. There's a little bit of corrosion. It's probably installed in that 2010 project. <laughs> it looks good and it's, it's solid. So there's some tread left on the tire here. It's not real robust, but there's tread left on this tire. The existing gangway out there, it's not in great shape. The transition plate is being fixed by salmons, but the welds underneath the gangway are starting to fail. It's not ADA compliant. It kind of lands a little bit wonky on the floating docks down there. It's really kind of tough. Um, <coughs> the interior floating docks here are just old homemade floating docks. Tidal Wave made them, literally made them in a parking lot. And when Salmons was out here relocating this dock out of the waterway uh, a year or so ago, they had to rehab this interior dock, but the framing of that interior floating dock is cracked, it's broken, it's reached the end of its useful life. And it was kind of a homemade uh, one-off thing for the water sports guys anyway. The outer dock here, timber floating dock, it is in decent condition. Worn decking, worn uh, framing, but it's a solid dock. It's, it's, uh, it's got, with a little bit of rehabilitation, it's got some, some tread left on its tire as well. However, the, something would have to be done in the interior to, uh, to really provide safe access for the public moving forward. So with that in mind, Desiree and Douglas asked us to look at a couple of different options for both of these docks. One was more of a rehab option. What can we do to rehab these, execute the improvements uh, with as much leaning on the existing infrastructure as much as we possibly can? And the second alternative would be to kind of scrap what's out there and, and build something nice, new, with a longer useful life. We think that, that this dock here and, and this, this outer floating dock with some, some maintenance may have a, what do you say here, a, um, you know, five to seven to maybe 10 year useful life in aggregate. And similar on, on this dock with some rehabilitation here with some rehabilitation out here. So there's, there's some time. We know that the existing docks aren't, aren't, the, aren't the best, but, but they, they do have a little bit of time uh, left. Uh, so we looked at refurbishment, utilizing as much of the is existing infrastructure as we, as we could, and then replacing new. So we came up with a couple of options on each and some associated costs for each of those redevelopment options. Close this. So here's the here's the public dock. Existing fixed pier going out, removal of the existing gangway, refurbishment of the existing outer floating dock, addition of a new kayak launch area here, and addition of new floating docks in here to replace the old ones that, that have gone. Uh, as their useful life, addition of a new ADA gangway, and the addition of the new gangway access node here. Gangway weighs about 16 or 18,000 pounds, so we'll have to build a special little platform for it to attach to, to this dock. But doing all this is, is the first option that, that we saw for the public dock. It mimics very closely what's already permitted for this dock in form, but again, we'll have to pursue a change in use for this. I believe we're already under contract for. We just want to get clarity from the, the city before we pursue that. So that's that's kind of the, the first option for the public. Dock. 
costs for doing that. We assume for direction by Douglas and Desiree that any improvements to the public dock will be done in conjunction with improvements to the intercoastal dock. So it's one big contract. We just split the cost estimates in half for discussion purposes. So performance and payment bond, builder's risk, mobilization and demo, uh, demolition of the existing uh, little floating dock stuff, new fixed pier, new gangway, fire protection, which was discussed here earlier today, uh, new floating dock, a little bit of maintenance out on the existing Floating dock, redecking. Re We've assumed all these would be redecked, particularly for public use and for safety and, and aesthetics. Uh, new lighting pedestal, just a new light out there that provides some lighting. A little bit of potable water, uh, a fire stand pipe system. This would be classified as a marina for NFPA code. So we'd have to have a little stand pipe out there. Not, not terribly expensive, but, but just another add. And then the, the specific ADA uh, kayak launch out there. Uh, would be would be something that that would be custom built and delivered. Uh, so refurbishment and redoing this, utilizing the, the existing infrastructure, we're looking at about a five or six hundred thousand dollar project to bring it up to snuff. And that's what the fifteen percent contingency. That is, that's to be conservative. Right. Yes. And there's also I noticed you also have the usual disclaimer too that with the volatility of cost of goods these days and supply chain and everything else it could continue to drive some cost up. It, it could go up or, or it could go down. We've seen timber prices start to come down in certain applications. We've seen other prices like ePay decking go through the roof. It's almost $20 per square foot higher than when we started the marina rehab project. So it's, it's, it's just all over the board. <laughs> these costs that were used to develop these estimates that we're going to talk about today were utilized using recent bid numbers that we have for other projects. DeWeese Marina re Redevelopment right next door. We've got really good bid numbers for that by a few different contractors. Really similar type work, floating docks, fixed piers, gangways of similar sizes, things like that. Utilize that. We're redoing St. John's Yacht Harbor on John's Island. We've got some bid numbers for that. Looking at that. Bohick at Marina, redoing that. Got some bid numbers there. So we've, we've got a lot of local bid numbers. So these, I think, are really good numbers today, but there is some volatility. So that's what the contingency uh, is intended to account for. <clears throat> yeah, just one comment, though. The, sure. The decking that you're <clears throat> including in this is just regular <clears throat> um, <clears throat> wood, but there's a big, big add-on for the ePay. That's correct. And, and that's a direct uh, direct extraction from the DeWeese Marina bid. The existing <clears throat> ferry dock they have there has it's got pine decking. But to demolish the existing decking, put down new pine decking on that dock, it was the same unit cost that I used for this. And then we had a uh, an ad alternate for <clears throat> ePay not only on redecking the ferry dock, but to deck the rest of their floating docks in the marina. And it was 25 or $27 a square foot, which, which I included here in the notes, additional to the, to the pine, which is absorbent, but that's, those are the numbers that we got recently. So I'm back to my same old question. So option A, no amendment to the uh, permit, there would be a change in use amendment, which is basically, this was permitted as a commercial water sports operation. Now we're gonna have it permitted as a public use dock. And then I believe in that amendment, we would want to change from having, I don't know how many we have, eight or 10 jet ski jet docks wrapping around the floating dock to just having the purpose designed ADA Kayak launch there. Those would be the only changes. So, wouldn't you have to amend for the gangway too? Because that it's already permitted. The the eighty foot one. Mm -hmm. It is okay. Wow. Yeah. So, part two. When does this current unamended permit expire? Good question. I would estimate three to four years from now. 
with any more extensions or no? That was the first one. We can certainly pursue an extension. Uh, those extensions typically are for five years. OCRM is getting a little stricter about that, but seeing the progress that you've done on the marina side, I think they'd be more willing to grant you some time on that. So yeah, there's there's about three years left, and I believe an extension would easily. Yeah, usually they allow a couple extensions, and then about, they about then two. they stop. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Yeah. So <clears throat> with this with this option, yes. what's the what's the useful life after this work is done? It's a good question. So the the fixed pier we think still got about ten years. So you do this work, you, you rehab the floating dock and fixed pier, you've got about 10 years left in this country. And those, those are the main options. Okay. Obviously, the gangway and the new floating docks would be nice and new and they last longer, but you're tying them into some older. Kirby, you did indicate too that the narrowness of the dock might be an issue with someone carrying kayaks down that, that way. That, that's true. And, and the permit permitted improvements that we obtained for this were made with the water sports operation in mind and not for a public kayak launch in mind. Mm -hmm. So as we pursue the change in use and perhaps the modification of this, we might want to consider changing this to make it more accessible for kayak use. Certainly you couldn't Two people couldn't pass here if someone was dragging a kayak or dollying one down. Right. So it's certain it's less than ideal. Is it wide enough for a dolly? I believe it's wide enough for a dolly. But but no two-way traffic. No way. And it would be it would be really tricky. Your gangway would be enough though, right? The gangway is is it it's eight eight feet wide. Yeah, it's an eight footer. So that's plenty wide. <clears throat> it's this is a kind of pinch gap. Right. And then we've got the security gate in there, which could be modified to allow for it, but that constricts that access a little bit. I guess doable, but less than ideal. Mm -hmm. So that's that option. When Douglas and Desiree and I met out there the other day, just to start talking about this project, we discussed the fact that the existing dock with its narrow five foot access and security gate, and things like that, even though it's now going to be a public use dock, it's really that welcome to the public. It doesn't say, hey, you know, come out for a leisurely stroll and this is open and free to the public. Um, so we talked about developing an option that that maybe accounted for that a little bit more. And what we thought was a, a wider, more pedestrian friendly boardwalk style pier, something that the residents could really come out and enjoy. Um, so we, we talked about some some various sizes and things like that. We talked about the Mount Pleasant Pier underneath the old bridge with the the coverings and the swings and things like that that allow people to to go out there and walk that's kind of a fishing pier at the end but it, it's it's very much so a pedestrian pier as well so we talked about the the pros and cons of doing that here uh, we talked about bringing that pier in straight to the shoreline rather than at an angle uh, and, and looking at that with regard to parking and how that played into this so this option is starting from scratch Brand new, brand new fixed pier leading out from shore, wider, 16 feet wide, allowing plenty of access for kayaks and people to pass and, and do different things. A couple of shade structures that could have some seating or swings for people to catch that breeze and kind of look up and down the waterway. Still utilizing that, that eight foot by eight foot gangway, uh, having that new kayak launch out here and a brand new floating dock on the outside here. Um, to accommodate to to accommodate the public use something that would be really new good safe sustainable welcoming costs associated with that uh, again you know all the preliminaries the, the 
bonding to make sure. Demo of the old stuff, a new fixed pier, shade structures, gangway, uh, limited utilities, a, a little bit of lighting, a little bit of water to, to have, be able to spray it down when, when needed, uh, and then the kayak wash job. A little bit more design work and construction support work and things like that, more permitting involved and something like that, uh, and a much, much higher overall cost. Still included that 15% that contingency, just to be safe in this day and age, the much bigger price tag on this particular option, $1.7 million. With about a million dollars that being between the uh, timber, I mean, the, the pier, the, the fixed pier reconstruction totally and uh, a new floating dock. Yes, that's correct. If, if I could just add um, a little bit more background to, to what led the conversation and kind of what led to this is we have been working on the upland side of this property on this linear green space park. Um, and we've been meeting with the tenants about that. And um, in that process, you know, it, it really led us to think long and hard about the fact that to make that linear park work, we were gonna have to give up significant number of parking spaces adjacent to the parking that we're already kind of acknowledging is too little so that discussion and the parking discussions all led us to i think the conclusion that we should scale back the improvements on the upland and leave the parking there uh, as much of it you know as we felt like we could reasonably with the idea of investing the money more in the pier itself and less in the upland uh, improvements. We thought that if you're coming to that, if, if you're a resident and you're gonna come here, you're probably really not gonna come for the linear park on the upland, you're coming to go out on the dock. So that was really the, the kind of the thought that led us to an option of putting more of the focus and the investment into the water side and less uh, into the, into the upland improvements that's obviously down on the agenda and we'll talk a little bit more about the upland side discussions but that was really the background of what led us to asking atm to do a more you know basically more of an investment in the water side of this property so so that's all new that's all all brand new. Brands, thank you. Like, just rip everything out and start over. Brand new. But, uh, and on this, something new like this, your timber construction, you, I assume the floating dock would be a, a timber frame floating dock, or, may, or maybe aluminum like, like the new marina has. But you're looking at a 25 or 30 year useful life mm -hmm. in this type of project as compared to the seven to 10 on the, the rehab. Kirby, talk to us about the uh, construction timeline, the difference between rehabbing the existing dock and then just starting over, doing option A versus option B. How long will the dock be down, I guess you'd say? So both, both projects would require a crane rig and a barge, pretty substantial undertaking uh, to install the gangway in the new floating dock. This is, is just fairly minor work, really. A little bit of pile driving here. Uh, no real pile driving here, but setting this, this heavy gangway and, and attaching these floating docks and doing maintenance out here on this dock. But I think the biggest uh, time factor in this rehabilitation project would be the lead time on the floating docks and, and gangway, which would be four or five months in and of themselves. So you're looking at probably, you know, you figure all in six months of, of lead time on, on equipment and supplies and probably one month in actual execution. So six or seven months for a project like this, um, maybe a little bit longer, another, uh, another couple of weeks to redeck everything. So mm -hmm. maybe eight, eight, eight months, but actual physical shutdown of the, of the dock 
probably two months from start to finish. There's not a lot of prep work that really has to be done. There's not a lot of demo work that would have to be done. So yeah, about, about two months interruption. So there's a possibility if we ended up going with an option like that, a good possibility, I would think that you'd have, even with lead time, you could get the supplies, materials and all of that and have, have most of the work done in the off season, have it ready to go again by next high season. That, yes, certainly, you know, starting at this, this point in time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. March, early September, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, what about concept B? Much more intense. Uh, there's some demolition work involved. I think everybody saw how quickly the marina demo went, though. <laughs> it's uh, pretty, pretty easy to pull. There's nothing really heavy here, no heavy piling or anything like that. There's a few loads of piling out, out on the loading dock, but that wouldn't take that long. Um, lead time again on all this, all the same stuff. Six month lead time, demo work probably two weeks. And then the construction of the fixed pier would be the um, would be the issue here. I would say that would take probably four or five months to complete. Four months, just based on what we saw over at St. John's Yacht Harbor. We just built a new dock, mm -hmm. new fixed pier over there that had boat lifts. A little bit different, but I'm just thinking thinking out loud. So the shutdown time here. Instead of the two months, you're probably four or five months out of operation. Still probably could be done in the in the off season if you consider the off season the day after Labor Day. Right. And we really don't have an off season anymore. To right. Do. Yeah. It's stretches. We got such a big shoulder season. So again, this one, it would be more difficult. There's more design work involved in this with the new fixed gear mm -hmm. that would take some time to do, whereas the other one might in that regard so it would be more challenging to start today and have it ready by this time next year but but a possibility permitting permitting is another concern here this would take some time to re-permit it's a it's a more substantial modification ripping out the old dock putting in a new bigger dock things like that so you're probably looking at 10 or 12 months for a, for a permit. Just not because it's anything difficult or challenging or if there's any, I seriously doubt there'd be any public outcries, just that's how mm -hmm. the agencies are working. That's the backlog there, so. Because that would go to the core too, right? Yes, it would. And the core, the core is not the issue, it's OCRM <clears throat> and, and their backlog, unfortunately. They'd lost some staff. And, uh, so it's good, good, good option, but certainly yeah. more intense. <laughs> the other, the other comments, Clay. Well, we just spending four point three million at the marina now. <laughs> <laughs> Keep rolling. Yeah. You're gonna have to start ducking. <laughs> Is there a middle ground between those two options? That's a good question. You know, I, I think there could be, and one, one alternative, I thought y'all might ask that question. One alternative might be, I, I personally don't like tying in new floating docks to an older floating dock. I think you're, you're trying to, to latch on to something that's that's just not got the same, it's not homogeneous. And you're really trying to create smooth, effective, safe ADA public access. And you're trying to put new docks onto something that, that's just older, it's, it's not gonna last as long. I, I don't like that. One, one thought that popped into my mind was to redo all the floating docks. And do this, and this, and maybe make some modifications here to make the access a little bit better. Um, but again, all the hardware on the top looks pretty good. But if you did that, then from this point all the way out, you have everything brand new. And at the point in time that this dock, you know, fine through the 
surveys and things like that, that it's an issue and not being used or people need more access, then you can always come back in and replace it. So that's that's one way you can skin the cat. Um, I think if you got into the if you got into this option, you just got to roll. It doesn't it wouldn't make sense to keep this little tiny bit out here if you were going to do this. But if you wanted to do something that would really improve this this piece of access out here, make it really safe and accessible, that may be something you could do. I obviously didn't price that. I can do that pretty easily, but that's one thing you could do, and then maybe make some improvements in here. The one thing that that does short term is that may hem you into this kind of dot configuration where if you in 10 or 15 years wanted to replace this with that more robust wider bigger pier maybe you'd have to lose this little piece too and, and, and do a little bit more modification or maybe you just slide this over now and make this piece bigger so that it would fit with the wider dot so I think I think that could be your <coughs> your middle ground. Could could you work that up? Is the numbers on that, please? Yeah, okay. Is that good, Katie? Yeah, yeah. I like I like the more expensive one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean <coughs> the permitting, yeah. yeah. Well that I mean that's that's a big negative, but yeah. I mean I yeah. just you know. Well, the permitting process, I mean, you say it's going to take close to a year to get the proper permit, so OCRM. Um, I mean, that just means you're stuck with what we've got for longer, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, but you can't really make any real significant improvements. There's no real rehab going on because you're waiting for all the permits before you do anything. So, so if we have at least another workup that gives us sort of the middle ground that Katie had asked about, that'd be great. Because you know we're not going to be making any spending decisions here today, but no. we're going to. Be and that and that wouldn't have the permit that that middle ground idea would not have the permitting issues, or maybe it would. Not as significant. Okay. We still have some. You know, I think what we want to do is is do a little something in here just to make it more accessible. We'll see in <coughs> this option, we have this little fillet here just to make the access to the game a little right. bit. We'll do something like that, and then that, that would be it. So certainly not the, the full process that we would have to go through for this new big pier and all that. Okay, cool. That's that done. <laughs> Here's the other one. So as I mentioned, this existing fixed pier, decent shape, good timbers, needs a new deck, needs new hardware right away. Um, but it was really designed to be a substantial structure. So it's got it's got some use left on it. Um, coming in here, redoing all the decking and the and the hardware, adding this little node to accept this new gangway. This is a six by 80 foot gangway. It's already permitted. Pulling out all these tiles and fingers out here. No easy task. And then framing in new pile guides on the back side all the way down to give that dock the anchorage it needs to survive on that waterway. Um, is a pretty substantial undertaking. This is a pile. It would, it would require new piles. Concrete piles are tricky. Sometimes you can pull them out and reuse them, but most of the time you can't. They chip, they crack, they break. It's, it's difficult. So we've assumed all new steel pipe piles back here, real similar to what's out of the marina. Uh, new utilities throughout. Very light utilities on this end, basically just lighting. And then more. Uh, substantial marina style utilities on this end to accommodate these jet docks and to accommodate side tie birthing on the outside uh, from a, a you know commercial marina operation. Uh, so that's that. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kirby. Question. <clears throat> so does that 
does this option extend the T dock out further? This, this, yeah, it goes out further into the waterway about to the old one. Right? Okay. About 20 feet farther. So with the silting that's going on, I'm, I'm assuming that's that delineation, that one line delineation. This is the zero mean low water line. That's basically mud flat at low tide. That's where it shows up. That's a 2016 survey. That's the latest survey data that we have. <clears throat> when Mike and I went out there and walked it the other day, we're standing on the back side of, of the, this dock, which is almost where the back of this check dock is. And I think if you had like a 16 foot flat boat, we were out there at low tide on purpose. A little 16 foot flat boat, you might be able to get on off jet dock, but anything bigger than that, it would be really <laughs> tough. It seems to have silted in a little bit more, which brings back into the discussion the question of dredging and whether the city wants to look at that again. Because to really execute this and have jet docks back here be viable, you probably really need to dredge some. Yeah, yeah, because you need an area to, to not just get in there, but to try to run the boat yeah, up there. Power load on this yeah. Area. It would be really tough. Now, you take the jet docks away, and you just got a little 16 or 17 footer, and you want a side tie back here. That's probably more feasible. But what we've got in this scenario is really challenging. We've got all the piles on the back side. So you don't have this flat, continuous base of dock. All the piles would have to be integrated onto the outside of the dock in this relocation scenario. And you can kind of hide those. You can kind of build your jet docks around those piles. So it doesn't really affect your jet dock. But if you wanted, if you didn't want to do the jet dock, and you just wanted the side tie dock back here, integrated by the pile. Can't you put the piles in the middle of the float? That would require a much more intensive float reconstruction process. We're assuming that this is the existing float. And we're just moving it out. Yeah. So that's that's a challenge on this option. Big challenge. Um, Brian, how many boats can tie up on the current T dock? On the front or back side? Uh, both. All, all together. Yeah, all together. So 11? Total. So we're adding up. Ton more. I think, I think this represents the number of jet dogs that are permitted. Yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's the kayak, the coastal expedition, their jet dock takes up a significant amount of space on the backside. If they weren't there, you could have another two boats. That's another, I'm glad you mentioned that. In this scenario, Douglas had mentioned when we were out there, Coastal Expeditions currently operates out of a trailer in the parking lot. This area. 20 foot trailer or something like that. They do their leasing and t shirt sales and all that stuff. That's become an issue with the value of parking on the site, trying to figure out a way to get them out of it. We've assumed in this option. The coastal expeditions would utilize this kind of dead space on the big pier out here. Not ideal, it's only about five or six feet wide, but similar to how these guys used to operate, we thought the coastal expeditions may be able to utilize that space in some work, some capacity to get the trailer out of the parking area, kind of free up some more space and utilize that dead space on the dock. So that's, that's something that we considered in this option. So that's that's six feet by thirty on this drawing here. So, how, how large is the trailer? I mean, how, how does that does that cut down significantly on what on the kind of space they have now, or is that I think it's a trade off? I think they've got about twenty or twenty four foot trailer. Mm -hmm. So it's real similar. It's just kind of an oddly shaped dot. Right. I don't know why it was built in that configuration. Just look out there. So just thinking how. How we can utilize that space a little bit better and get rid of that trailer. 
might be able to might be able to push them out there. Okay. So how many boats can we side tie on the outer edge of the floater? And I know that's kind of a crazy question because you could have a 16 foot boat, you could have a 28 foot boat, but <clears throat> And where I'm going with this is we've got 11 tied up now. Why don't we try to just keep 11? If we can get a couple more, then that's great. But it was just, it's a good question. And I think the thrust of this alternative when we looked at permitting, I think this is probably done during the master plan process, was just to get rid of this. Everybody knew those fingers. Just get so just to create the side. Certainly, the restaurant can do a lot of that, like you said, the shim, a lot easier than those fingers. Maybe you can do some rafting and things like that. Um, but there wasn't really that discussion of how many, how many do we need or how many do we want. It's just let's get rid of the fingers, make the side tie, or use your friendly as what she did. We, we kind of threw the jet docks in. The permit at the last minute just to <clears throat> authorize it because it's so much But yeah, that's a good point. I mean, just trying to preserve what you've got. And, you know, if we can grab a couple more to help things, then that's, that's fine because, you know, both options are a big number. Really big number. So that kind of leads into leads into this is the same same numbers generated from the same sources of recent bid numbers. So I feel really good about it. the end result is probably not what you want to see, but um, demolishing the fingers and the piles, creating that new little node of the fixed gear, new gangway, new little plumbing float for the gangway to land on. Um, and then the, the floating dock relocation, that's that's the big number. Um, and, and we just did something similar at St. John's um, out there. We relocated a, a, a floater from one portion of the to the other. Got that number from, from there. Uh, and then maintaining the fixed gear, as I mentioned, all the all the hardware on it is our dog. That's all that needs to be done. Redacking more electrical out here now and services, more slips. And, and that's a substantial number, $150,000. Potable water standpipe system, which is going to be difficult to install in that floating dock. It's going to be required because it's code now. Um, but routing a, a standpipe through that old dock that may not be feasible. I don't know. That's going to be a challenge. Um, adds up to 1.2 to, to execute that work. So it's a very substantial project. Certainly would make the, the dock more user friendly. Uh, certainly would add to the useful life of the dock and the fixed pier would get coastal expeditions kind of out of the parking lot, which would be, which would be good, uh, assuming that dock space can work for them. Uh, question, Kirby, is, so would, did you say earlier that neither of the, uh, both of the options require dredging on the backside? And and I and just for the benefit of the group, there later will be into the uh, budget for the marina, and there is 1.5 million in dredging in kind of the out years, maybe 25, 26, and there's 50,000 in dredging permitting in next year. Is that is that work? I wasn't I wasn't there part of the process, but that is that work. And I guess as the group considers it, that amount should also kind of be thought about mm -hmm. in coordination with the project, correct? Yes. So as I mentioned, and this is old survey data, and we're working with that in our visual observation. But at low tide, it, it gets really tight. So to execute this project and include the jet dock. I'm certain some level of dredging would need to occur. Didn't execute the jet docks. Maybe you could get away without it, but I think a new survey would be in order. And certainly the dredging permitting and the execution of the dredging are additional costs to 
to really make this viable over the long term. This should be part of this discussion. Were you do, were you all involved with that amount? I I was not here last week, so I don't know where the one point five million came from, and I don't know exactly how much that covered. Were Were you all part of that conversation? No. Okay. I have had conversations with Desiree and Debbie about dredging numerous times in the past, but last week we didn't have okay. those discussions. Does that sound excessive for that amount? 1.5 million? Or is that right? And being in the middle of a dredging project over at Ripley Inlet, that's, <laughs> you need all you can get. That might be correct, all right. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Disposal, one, one thing we have talked with Desiree and Debbie about was the fact that the Corps of Engineers is becoming more and more restrictive with their dredge <clears throat> disposal sites along the intracoastal. Mm -hmm. Certainly those would be the first ones that would come to mind for a, executing a project like this because of proximity. So I, I stressed to Desiree and, and Debbie that it would be wise to start that permitting process and getting the entitlement to either use the Coors Basins or another disposal strategy sooner rather than later. Uh, so that at least you know and or could firm up what the dredging costs really might be. Yeah, that's, that's, that's another part of the conversation. And here is the redo it all version. Rip all that fixed gear out. Clean, lay out the uh, shorter fixed gear, come straight out. Utilize the length of the gangway to your advantage so you don't have to build as much fixed gear back. New pony float to accept the weight of that big gangway. Put coastal expeditions on a platform out here, a floating platform. Not dissimilar from what they're operating with now with the jet docks, but something purpose designed to account for their operation. We had talked, Doug, uh, Doug was about putting them up here, um, closer to shore, but I don't think that's viable because it would have to go over the marsh. And this year, I probably wouldn't care for that too much. So we just shifted them out here. I think it's, it, it would be just fine. Keep the jet docks, brand new floating dock out here. Keep the entitlement to the jet dock out there, knowing that's the restaurant side. And there are certain stipulations and restrictions in their lease with, with what they can use, but just have it as a placeholder. Um, and new utilities out there, similar to the other. This would be good, though, because it would have all internal power. Down. So even if you didn't do the jet docks, you'd have that flush backside where you can side tie up along with other piles. So nice frame. Purpose designed to be out on the waterway, you know, get hit with those weights and things like that. About a 25, 30 year useful life, something like this. Robust, purpose designed for that site. Y'all have seen these numbers. Um, bank preliminaries, demo everything. Two fixed gear, shorter fixed gear, two gangway, brand new floating dock. Big number. Utilities and fire systems, things like that. You know, new design of that new fixed gear and, and all that stuff. Uh, 1.6. So re refurbishing the old 1.2, mm -hmm. tearing it all out and redoing it new, longer useful life, 1.6. There's probably a middle ground in this one too. <laughs> <laughs> Would you explore it? So we're not going to like that either. You You're not going to really like it. <laughs> no. or before you get there, you just said something that um, in in the first option for the restaurant side, if they don't have the jet docks, can they tie up to the backside? Not easily. Okay. Because what we're going to do, and this is not a I didn't show up real well in the drawing. Right now, along the back side of this dock, there are four anchors. They are external platforms. 
I know exactly what you're talking about. No picture. Now. I mean, I, I don't know if other people yeah, do, no, but yeah, I, I know. <laughs> so it's the file that's behind the dot. Uh, yeah. So there's four of them down the way. There's seven finger piercings. The finger piercings, I think, are really old. Cool. Same place. More than four of the ones we have. <laughs> but you need to add those seven tiles that are out front of those fingers on the back side of those things to make it as sustainable as it is on, on the water when they get hand. With those boat weights that go by in the middle of the night, the six forty rolling through. Big, big weights more than anything else. Not weights, just weights. So you, you got to have that resilience. So we've got to add those piles on the back side of this dock. There's no other no way to put them. I'd love to tear it up and see if you could frame them in. But you start doing that, pulling it apart, and you're redoing structural members of the dock. It gets really, really intense. And that 300,000 retrofit becomes 500,000. So, or uh, so we have to put those piles on the back side. So you'll see, see we, we've got those piles kind of just spaced in here. So you've probably got 20 feet between these piles. So you might be able to get a little boat in here, a little boat from here, a little boat from here. It's doable. Get a bigger boat, it's not ideal. But the bigger boat probably wants to go on the outside end. The little guys, like, like me, <laughs> we can kind of sneak up in the back. But it, it's just not, not how we would design it. We got They're dealing with it right now. There's only two mm -hmm. back there. Morgan Creek dealing with that. Right. So the, the, the middle ground on this one might be. Redoing the fixed pier. And leaving the old floating die, which I don't really like, but it it it, it might be, or excuse me, you could redo the fixed pier and, and leave the floating dock, or you could do the new floating dock and leave the existing fixed pier. That might be the better option. Because then you've got a new floating dock, much more user-friendly, the piles are taken care of, you got a long peaceful life out of that dock, you're not paying for new, I mean you're getting new decking. And all that, everything's brand new, and, and refurbish this because it's got it's it was constructed for a bus. You got to refurbish this, new hardware and things like that. Maybe do board here and there, and redeck it, and then utilize that to the extent you can, um, and then get all the useful life you can out of this. And then when it's time goes, just boop, build a new fixed pier back back from there. That may be your middle ground. I think I personally like that option better than paying all that money to relocate that old floating dock. Yeah, it seems like just, just a challenge with fingers. Or like throwing good money after bad or whatever the, yeah. <laughs> the saying is. It's, it's challenging. Okay, well, if you give us a work up an estimate on that, it'd be good. Yeah. What other questions do we have? <clears throat> I'm good. Time on these? Let's. Um, Time to construct. Yeah. So let's see. This is this option. Um, this is probably a six month process. Knock out of commission. Same. We don't have a lot of lead time. We get gangway lead time on this. Maybe a little bit of pipe piling and things like that, but it's not a lot. But the execution of the work from the demolition of the piling to reframing to relocating to um, refurbishing this dock to then adding all the utilities in, I, I usually see this as a six month downtime. It's very complex. For a small project, it's got a lot of moving parts. And on the other one, total demo, total replacement, it's probably four to six years. It's probably a little bit longer. It should go a lot. It should go, and I say that because the utility installation on the new dock is going to go a lot easier. Now, a lot of retrofit that they have to do, that dock is going to come from the factory with the pile gun, and they're going to take that steel pipe pile and vibrate it right into place.
this one would go certainly go quicker. You'd have a little bit of demolition time involved, so you might save a month in this as as opposed to the the uh, full rehab. What type of per permitting on this one? Is there any delay in regards to? Yeah, there would, there, there would be. This is a configuration here, so we'd have to seek a modification for this and for this. That is seven, eight, maybe even 12 months just because of backlog. Whereas th this, this, would, this would require some as well, because this would be the change to use to put coastal expedition down here on this dock. Um, that seems a lot less intense to me. Permitting window and a half on this one. All right. Food for thought. Thank you so much. <laughs> I wish I had. I wish I had a clear answer. It's tough because the you know the existing infrastructure has some useful life left. Mm -hmm. And replacing with new is, is not inexpensive. So it's, it's kind of in this middle ground. But, but I think looking at these other options that we've discussed may shed light on, on the path. What kind of turnaround do you need on that for these other options? Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of tied up this week. So by the end of next week, mm -hmm. I should certainly have, have you all something. Hopefully the end of this week, but certainly in the next week. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kirby. Thank That's you very you. much. Appreciate that. Douglas, is there anything we need to do at this point to move this forward? No, no, I think that was for your just discussion, okay. that information and discussion. All right. Okay. We further talked about it, um, ways and means, and probably the, okay. I guess, the budget workshop. All right. Well, let's move on to item B, which is on, under new business, which is discussion consideration of the proposed options for redevelopment of the new public dock at the marina. So um, I believe that Desiree meant the, uh, the green space there and not the dock, because I think oh, you've just talked. She? Oh, the green space, yeah. yeah. Because like we, we, we have, we have, yeah. yeah, that's right. Because we <laughs> have, we have, we have slides in our deck in regards to that. No, you're, you're no right. offense. We didn't, we didn't catch okay. that. Okay. Uh, let me, uh, there we go. Yeah, there's two options. Yeah. So the really the big news here and we've, we've already kind of talked about it is that after a lot of time and thought about that kind of linear park we have the staff i guess has concluded that it would be best to shorten the amount of real estate that's dedicated to that park and leave parking really as much parking as we probably can um leave as much of it as parking as we reasonably can um and so we have we have engaged davis and floyd with this design we met with them on site last week um this is this is very kind of quick and dirty uh concept and and they just sent it to us i think friday thursday or friday we have a, there are some things wrong with it so they will need to refine this, but I think it's good that we talk about kind of big picture. The Kelly Messier's old plan had this park going all the way down, all the way to the um, all the way to the restaurant. We've we've asked Davis employed to leave these spaces here as, as they are. Um, we ask that they add the handicap spaces that you know we've been hearing the need for those. We, we want to add those. We don't want them to be here. We we were anticipating them being in this line. So you know, if you look at these concepts, a good chunk of them currently, as they're thought about, 
or take it up with more parking, which was not our intent. We're, we're hopeful that these will be moved to here, which will leave a shortened green space, but it will be right at the kind of nexus of the public parking and the ramp where we think it should be. And I guess we, we had our questions about would the person down here feel connected to the, the parking space or, or the public dock. So we think it's good that it's all close and compact in there with the dock. Um, and then they have sent two options. Like I said, both of them. Uh, one is a little bit uh, more. This one is, I would say, uh, leaning heavier on being landscaped. You see there's, there's really just a, um, a five foot boardwalk around the edge. On both of these, that's a common feature. And, I'll, I'll, and what that is, is if, you, if you've been down there and actually Kirby had some slides on it, the top of that boardwalk has some two and a half, three foot boards currently. They, they're in bad shape, they need to be replaced. So the thought was we would take those up and instead of going back with two or three foot boards, we would go back with five foot boards and put a, some type of guardrail on the far side. So that would become really the walkway. Um, we think that we can fit that walkway in front of these cars. If you go down there now, you'll see that there's, which I think are old concrete pilings that are, that are delineating the edge of that parking space now. We think that we could put this connecting walkway on the outside of those spaces. So you could get from these spaces in this park area to the, to the other dock and to the, uh, ultimately to the restaurant. Um, we're not looking for, which of the other ones? Um, this is the second part of their concept. It's a little bit um, less landscaping and more, um, furniture there's there's park benches in there there's a picnic table in there more kind of connecting walkways again it has the ada spaces here these these would get moved to that to that line of parking leading into it i think um can't really see how this interacts with the rest of the parking um flow but we i believe that's in the middle of their turn aisle so don't think that's going to work um, Davis and Floyd was very um, kind of optimistic about the ability to get some something like this done quickly. They they thought maybe even before uh, Memorial Day. We have um, we have told them that we would get back with them. They're they're working on pricing. Um, we know that it will be a different configuration, but we think that the quantities will will roughly be in line with these concepts, just rearranged slightly. Um, and they also included uh, examples of some of the fixtures that would be, that would be on site. There. So in a nutshell, that's where we are. I don't know that we need any, uh, we're, we're continuing to work uh, with Davis and Floyd. Main, main part was to just put that in front of you, let you know we're working on it and really let you know that we've, we've kind of come to the conclusion to shorten the area of that park in favor of leaving parking in place. Right. It, it, yes. No, I, I was just gonna say, totally agree. We need, we need more parking than we do landscaping, so. Well, this, and this follows along with the plan too, to really concentrate our efforts on the public dock itself. That's right. Spend less out here, but do it, do it right. It's gonna be aesthetically look, look good looking, you know, preserve some parking uh, or the parking and, uh, you know, just less money spent right around this area. It, what we originally envisioned as kind of a park, it would be just nice and beautiful right here leading into the dock, but the dock's gonna be the real centerpiece. Right. Any um, feelings one way or the other on, on what they have given to us so far, in terms of leaning on towards more landscaping versus more kind of sitting areas and tables? 
the second one, the one we're looking at right now, yes. you say that that one can't work in that configuration or what? I don't think that these parking spaces. So, uh, I think that those parking spaces end up being in, a, in the dry pile. So I think this, these get shifted. But still close to the entrance. Yes, they will be the first ones in the entrance, but wouldn't be fully. Okay, be so you can, so you can still basically do the same. Yes, the thing. park would be the same, just okay. these connecting okay. spaces would be perpendicular instead of parallel to the So park. with this one, we get nine more spaces to park versus mm -hmm. the other one. These? Uh, no, the other ones. Did you get parking no, on this? No, those right there. Right there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what? yeah, that uh, also would clarify that that's outside of our area. Th yeah. That Those spaces are already uh, leased. That's yeah, that's, restaurant. Restaurant. Yeah, that's the care. restaurant would call the employee lot. <laughs> But yeah, gotcha. And both of these, well, that one doesn't have it, but you know, there's that wouldn't be a component of the of that plan. I feel like I like the more seating one. Yeah, I, I, one? I, I think so. Now, even even though we're talking about on the dock doing much more there and seating to view the waterway, there will be people I think that would want to. You just sit along the side here, in a mm -hmm. little bit of yeah, area too. Place to... So, yeah. I think we were more. I think for us, concept two was kind of more in keeping with what we were envisioning. Yeah. I like this. Yeah, I like this. All right. Yep. It's unanimous. All right. <laughs> Very good. So Do we need to vote on no, that? No, you don't. We're away? we're going to continue to uh, refine that, but um, we'll we'll bring back a more refined plan as we progress there all right all right thank you douglas all right New business item c discussion proposed fy23 operational budget for the isle of palm marina and front beach we'll wait for douglas to get back to his seat <laughs> hopefully you all got this in in your email i did not you. see you did or did not we did Okay. Yes. I didn't. I didn't see it. You did. I, you did. I must have missed it. Sorry. That's a separate email that Debbie sent earlier. Yeah, it came uh, right. It right came from out. Debbie. Yeah. I'm saying I'm straining, so. Well, we'll uh, go ahead, Kevin. You can pull it up. So um, I'm going to start with the Marina Enterprise Fund budget, and just going to hit kind of the high level changes and things that might jump out at you. But but let me know if anything else catches your eye thank you thank you uh line 12 of um marina revenues you see there 139 292 uh, that number includes the forty thousand uh, dollar that was delayed in payment from rent in fy 22 you'll recall that Council delayed taking that rent. So we anticipate receiving that additional $40,000 um, in that number. Mm -hmm. uh, next kind of one that jumps out to you may be line 21, maintenance and service contracts. There was a significant jump that in that 42107 under the uh, <coughs> fiscal year fiscal year 23 budget that that comes from an increased uh, insured value of those um, facilities so there's a there's just a jump in there because the value has gone up would also point out that uh, in that same line number 21 that 1.542 million that is the that's the dredging that includes 1.5 million of dredging that's in the FY25. Uh, year, the kind of out year. So we talked a, a little bit with Kirby about that one. Uh, that, it, go it, ahead. Says, it says transfers in from tourism funds. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. 1.5 million dredging project paid with transfers in from tourist funds. Uh, the line below that well, two lines below that line 22, that's $70,000, 50 of that 70 
is the design for the dredging work that we just talked about. So we anticipate that to be about a two year uh, lead time on the, on the um, permitting on that dredging. So we've got that starting in 23 in anticipation of it being ready to go to work in 25. The, below, the line below that, you have the $7,200. That's the, the outings that we talked about at the marina from <clears throat> Coastal Expedition. So we've put that in there um, to see, you know, seeing if you all wanted to support that, we, we put that in there as a placeholder. Um, continuing down, the rest of those are really just being budgeted um, based on prior actual years. Not a lot of change there. Continuing to my next page, the, the next one that kind of jumps out is line 61 um, under the Marina Water Sports Public Dock. That's the that hundred thousand dollars in fiscal year 23. That is the green space, the park that we've just been talking about. So that's uh, that's that. Does that include the bulkhead also? All the work to be done with the bulkhead, uh, widening the bulkhead. Oh yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. Um, next one um, in of interest, line seventy-three. That has um, that's two million seventy-one thousand four hundred nineteen dollars. That has uh, the one point six million in the T doc um, work. So that's that's plugged in at that number. Um, also has the hundred thousand. That's the the transfer in also for the hundred thousand dollars in green space. So that that line is getting into the transfers in seventy three. Um, that's all I have is really kind of points of interest and in, and. In, that budget, any questions on those that you see? I, I don't have any. Nope. Yes, sir. Good. Yeah. Good, Douglas. Good. Okay. Good. Next one to you. Uh, next one is the front beach and parking management budget. Um, this one is, this one's really based on just prior year's experiences. Uh, a few things that kind of jump out Line 16, you have an additional $20,000 increase on that line item. And that is because of the amount of credit card usage. Uh, that 20,000 is apparently just extra fees that were uh, associated with using credit cards. So, and that's just based on the prior year's experience. We, we just under budgeted um, looks like we budgeted 42 and we're going to hit somewhere 61, 107, or we did, we did hit 61, 107. So we're budgeting 62 there. We just miss forecasted in, in the prior year. Did fees get increased or we just have a, I, I more think traffic. it was just more usage than we yeah, more usage. Uh, anticipated. Um, yeah, and I get, you know, I don't think people are using cash on those. I think they used to use cash at a pretty high rate. Now it's kind of 100% card usage. Uh, line 35, you see $46,000. Uh, that is that is for uh, three kiosks, three parking kiosks that, that we need to buy. Also included in that number is $10,000 for public art. That is something that uh, we, have, we have budgeted in prior years. I don't think we've, we've budgeted for it uh, for several years, but we put it back in there. We're anticipating work going on down there. We know uh, 
uh, Robert's been doing a lot of work at the um, at the Front Beach at the lots facilities, and the facilities, the facilities. So just anticipating some uh, an art project down there. And that's really all I have on that. Unless there are questions, uh, I don't have any. It's good. It's good. We're good. Okay. New business item D, discussion of 70th anniversary of Cities Incorporation. I ask that this be put on our agenda, even though it's really not a, not really a real property item, I don't think. Uh, but uh, as quickly as I can here, Jimmy Carroll had sent us an email, you know, in regards to the Windjammer anniversary being the 50th, and it dawned on me since I've lived here a long time, just like uh, Kevin has, um, that, you know, we've had <clears throat> Most recent was a 50th anniversary of the of the incorporation of Isle of Palms, and we had that back uh, uh, well 20 going on 20 years ago, and it was a big deal. I mean, you know, we my, my wife volunteered a lot. I was in private sector at that time. I lined up all the beer, wine, and champagne for the celebration, so got all that handled. And we had a big party. I think we had things going on at the Front Beach. We had things going on at the Rec Center. And it was just a nice celebration. So I want to bring this forward and see if there's any interest with the committee here of us, you know, just going to council with it and or uh, probably ways and means, I guess, first, and just bring the idea up, see if there's a, an appetite for us to put something together, decide which committee it ought to go to, I'm thinking probably recreation, but I don't know, you know, um, but we could have some discussion around it, but I just would like to know what you think of the idea, basically. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I think it'd be like a, kind of like a front beach fest. Right. I mean, something. Right. Yeah. And I understand we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of background, a lot of, you know, records of the kind of things and activities that, that took place back on the 50th anniversary. So, uh, you know, there'll be some things that we can draw from on that. You know, information wise, it might help us in planning something like this. So, are you going to donate all the um, beverages again? On you know, the I'm, I'm retired now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have those kind of, that kind of pull anymore. <laughs> I'll do my part in drinking. <laughs> all right. So, we'll can we just take that add that to, to ways and means? Yes, yes, if we could do that. All right. When uh, when would it be? Uh, January 13th is the actual anniversary date okay. of next year. Now, I can't remember what month we had the celebration in, the, the 50th celebration. Okay. Seemed to me like it was warmer weather, but I don't know. <laughs> was it wintry? I can't remember. Was it? Okay. I mean, it seems to make sense to do it. Yeah. Close to the right. day, to right. I mean, yeah. as close as we can. And of course, it will be the good time, the seat, yeah, the, yeah. The, the shoulder season yeah. anyway. So, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, plan, plan a party, yep, yeah. another party, yeah, another party. Is it really? Quite deep. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, well, good, we'll take that on the ways and means. All right, so nothing else there, we'll go on to miscellaneous business. And that's our next meeting date, which is scheduled for 1.30 p.m. Monday, April the 4th. And I'm assuming that's good for everybody. So far. All right. Good to me. All right.